positively stay away from simple carbohydrates. Wow. And I can tell it's, you it's in a package, it is probably a simple carbohydrate. Even what would appear to be healthy. So um, plantain chips. Um, no. Yeah. I can't eat those. Come on. Read the label and it will scare you to death. Will I eat plantain chips? Sure I will, but I will use them as a dipping chip to get guacamole in my mouth. Or olive oil. Or olive oil, yeah. So, <sighs> yeah, I know. So you stay away from simple carbohydrates. Yeah. But what worries me is all that bad stuff is being consumed. Yeah. And the best way to suppress your immune system is sugar. Mm. Sugar absolutely suppresses white blood cell function. So please don't eat like that. Don't yeah, so what boosts the immune system? It turns out that um, um, olive oil, mm -hmm. the polyphenols in olive oil actually really boost the immune system. So do components of mushrooms. And, you know, I, I make one, and we'll get you some, called M Vitality, which is a mushroom extract. But mushrooms in general, even the humble button mushroom, will actually boost your immune system. And it does that, actually, by having the sort of complex sugars that your gut bacteria really, really wants and needs. The other thing, every human being that I see initially with leaky gut or autoimmune <clears throat> disease has a low vitamin D level. Mm -hmm. Uh, I had Mark Hyman on my podcast recently, and Mark has never seen vitamin D toxicity. Mm -hmm. I have been measuring vitamin D levels for over 20 years now. I have never seen vitamin D toxicity. The University of California, San Diego says that the average American should take 9,600 international units a day to have a safe level of vitamin D. Mm -hmm. The other thing that's fascinating is most people with cancer have low levels of vitamin D. And there's some very interesting trials of boosting vitamin D in people who have cancer mm. to prevent recurrences. So, um, right now, uh, I, I think everybody should be taking 5,000 international units, but right now... A day? A day. Uh, right now, we're probably wise to boost it to 10,000 a day. Wow. I'll give you an example. Uh, last week when this started, and I still see patients every day, um, I took 100,000 units on Monday, I took 50,000 <laughs> units on Tuesday, and I took 25,000 units on Wednesday, and then hit 10,000 units. If I feel I'm coming down with something, take more I will day. take 150,000 units three days in a row. 50,000 three times a day for three days. That's nearly a half a million international units of vitamin D in three days. Wow. And I'm not dead. Uh, I have my patients do the same thing. Uh, none of them have died. None of them have gotten vitamin D toxicity. But I can tell you, it always cuts whatever. It's one of the most effective antivirals there is. The second thing we need to do is we need to get, if you can, time to release vitamin C. Linus Pauling was right. Vitamin C is incredibly antiviral. But what he didn't know is we can't absorb enough vitamin C and keep it in our bloodstream because comes it comes out very, very quickly. So get yourself some time release vitamin C. The stores are empty. Amazon's empty. Right. But in the future, bar <laughs> barring that, in the future, barring that, go to, it's still there. I go to health food stores every yeah, day and yeah, just yeah. kind of check and see what's there and what isn't. Get yourself just the chewable tablets or Stop get it. the capsules and take it four times a day. Take 500 to 1,000 four times a day. Yeah. It's still better than nothing. It's still better than nothing. Uh, zinc is a great idea. Get about 30 milligrams of zinc. I'm a big fan of quercetin, sometimes pronounced quercetin. It's a compound that's present in the white pith of citrus. It's in apples and it's in onions. And it actually may be the compound that the old wives tale in apple a day keeps the doctor away. So quercetin is also very antiviral. Okay. And there's an exciting new paper that was just published yesterday that astaxanthin uh, seems to prevent the inflammatory response to the coronavirus. Hmm. Asta astaxanthin. It is a, a compound that actually makes salmon red. Um, and salmon eat algae and plankton that have, that produce astaxanthin. It's, uh, you know, it's, it's a really cool compound. Wow. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, you have different parts of your immune system lined up on all your mucous membranes, mm -hmm. ready for, you know, what's coming. And what's 
unfortunate is in a lot of our patients with leaky gut and with autoimmune diseases, we can actually measure that they're very deficient in the immune system that makes, for instance, IgA, which lines our uh, walls of our gut, and IgM, which is the second line of defense. And we can see that when we get their gut sealed, that, wow, their immune system is back. All their numbers are back up to normal. But that's what's happening. So again, the reason people with chronic diseases are susceptible to the virus is not because they have a chronic disease. It's because that is a sign that a gut. of a leaky gut in your immune system is impaired. Next is you gotta get some form of long chain omega-3 fat, be better known as fish oil. Mm. And vegans have no excuse anymore. There is algae-based DHA and EPA, but here's the deal. Your brain uh, is about 70% fat. So if you want to call me a fathead, you know, I, I will pat you. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I can just see around the internet uh, lighting up. And <laughs> me and is a fan. <laughs> fathead. So half of the fat in your brain is actually an omega-3 fat called DHA. So half, basically half of your brain mm -hmm. is fish oil. Wow. And as I talk about in the longevity paradox, you look at people, what are called the omega-3 index, which basically looks at how much DHA you have in you over the past two months. People with the highest omega-3 index have the largest brains and the largest areas of memory, the hippocampus. People with the lowest levels of DHA have the most shrunken brains and the smallest memory areas, hippocampus. Mm. You wanna get about a thousand milligrams of DHA per day. DHA. We got olive oil, we got uh, vitamin D3, we have fish oils. What else do we need to live longer? So you gotta have polyphenols in your diet. Phenols are plant compounds. Polyphenols are plant compounds that plants use primarily to protect themselves uh. against stress and sunlight. Uh -huh. uh, just interesting fact. We know that red wine is beneficial for you because of actually two polyphenols. The most famous is resveratrol. The other one is quercetin or quercetin. The higher the grapes are grown, the higher in altitude the grapes are grown, the more polyphenols they make. Because they need more to protect themselves. Yeah, right? exactly. It's basically uh, suntan. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, they, they've actually protected themselves against sunburn. Interesting. Also, the more the plant is stressed, the more polyphenols it makes to protect itself. Right. Okay? So polyphenols are traditionally in dark colored berries. So for instance, blueberries, blackberries, raspberries. Interesting fun fact, the leaves of these trees or vines have more polyphenols than the actual fruit does. Mm. So for instance, black raspberry leaves have far more polyphenols than black raspberries. Um, wow. And I take black raspberry capsules, oh, by the way, and it's in the book. There you go. Um, so, Olives, for instance, are loaded with polyphenols, huh. and olives that are stressed uh, produce even better. are even better. Wow. Olive leaves have more polyphenols than olives, so olive leaf extract is an easy way of getting the huge amount of benefits without drinking a liter of olive oil. Uh, you said American milk is something that we should not have in order to fix leaky gut. Yeah. Is there such thing as non-American milk that is okay to drink? Yeah, so most people can have sheep milk, can have goat milk. Interestingly enough, uh, goat milk uh, traditionally was called mother's milk because the, con the components in goat milk are very different than hmm. cow milk. Yeah. Uh, they're far more similar to human milk. Wow. And so I actually tell mothers if they're going to you know, give their child some animal milk, please make it goat milk yeah, rather okay. than cow's milk. Okay.